Hey, and welcome back to the Gringa Nation. Today we're gonna show you around the little town of Gori. So we got here pretty fast from the capital of Georgia, Tbilisi. It only took us around 45 minutes. Just head to the Didube metro station. Go down the stairs a little to the left. You'll start seeing some cars to various cities. You'll find one with a sign on it that says Gori. And we paid about five lari for each of us in a shared taxi. It's gonna give you a quick tour of our little Airbnb. It's on the second floor of this house here. Yeah, it's quite organized, has everything we need. I thought it was interesting that she has, it seems some, maybe some homemade wine and cha-cha that she sells for about 10 lari the bottle, so we'll definitely be having some of that later. Standard bathroom. Not the best place for tall people. You kind of have to duck down everywhere, but just two days, so it's fine. Little kitchen area here, so you gotta duck down to make coffee. This is my potting area. This is the back pod. Very good to fix your posture. And there's actually two rooms, not that we're gonna be using two rooms. And this one is for the children or adolescents maybe. In here is mom and dad's room, complete with a crib that we have transformed into our own personal closet and charging space. So now we're gonna hit the center of town. We'll be seeing the Stalin Museum, the Stalin Park. We are going to visit a fortress. So come with us to see Gori. So we've just arrived here at the Stalin Museum. This is our first stop. And Stalin, as some of you may not know, was actually Georgian. He was born Jugashvili, not Stalin. He later adopted that name, which means something similar to man of steel in Russian. So let's go see what it's like in there. It's almost like going to the to the Vatican City, but you substitute Jesus for Stalin. We've just finished the tour of the Stalin Museum and you can pay for a guided tour if you'd like but we were the only ones in there and we did not get the guided tour but the woman was trying to explain some things to us so good thing we didn't get it. Uh, now we're standing in front of Stalin's original house and we just left Stalin's personal train. He was not a big fan of flying so he took a lot of train trips and it seems that Stalin's dad actually had a little shoe shop down there. I think Stalin might have worked with him at some point there. And honestly, the museum is quite beautiful. I thought a lot of the artwork was amazing. Obviously, Stalin was probably hiring the best artists at the time. The museum itself has a lot of really nice details. It's 15 lari to get in, and I'm gonna remain impartial to the question of whether or not you should have a museum glorifying a dictator, but I would definitely recommend you visit the Stalin Museum while here in Gori. It's a very interesting attraction, and with a lot of history of the city and of the man himself. So, gringo seal of approval for the Stalin Museum. We just finished having lunch at a restaurant called Bedikoni. Uh, we had some Georgian sausages, potatoes, and some cheese balls that were really delicious. And the restaurant's actually just right next to the fortress that you see behind me. And we are gonna just have a little hike up there to see the view, so come with us. just at this monument now that's right next to the fortress. It's an homage to all the Georgian war heroes that died defending the country from the Persian troops. And they used to be actually in Vake Park, which is in Tbilisi, and then they moved them here many years ago. Pretty cool. He 
people were coming and trying to attack you from all sides. And yeah. Shoot bow and arrow at them. Here we are atop the Gori Castle and you can see the confluence of the rivers. One of them is the Mtbadi River that you actually might recognize from when we went to Mscheta. I'm actually not sure if it's this one because there are two rivers in town, but pretty impressive 360 degree views of the city. A lot of churches, you can see pretty much every single building in town. I was thinking that maybe it'd be unique to have a pit of snakes and throw your enemies in there. Imagination runs wild at times like these. Good morning, it is day two here in Gori. You might recognize the view behind me from yesterday. Today we are doing something a little different. We are going to an ancient rock town called Uplislihe. I hope I pronounced that right. So we're on our way to the bus station now. It's a quick bus there. Should only take about 10, 15 minutes. So yeah, let's go. Seems we have found the van to Uplislihe. We were on the other side of the street, but the men told us to come this way. And from our very limited knowledge of the Georgian language, we were able to read the sign on this van. Okay, the Marshulka is empty now, but uh, there were about 10 old ladies in here. I'm pretty sure when I leave the van, I'm gonna smell like I just left my grandma's house. But it seems we're really close now. You can even see the cave town from here already, so. Yeah, we'll be there soon. Simba. <laughs> Just a tiny little baby. This was worth the 15 lari alone. <laughs> to hold a little puppy like this. Okay, we have arrived. I've been saying it wrong this whole time. It's Oblitsihe. So I think that's closer. It means a uh, castle of God or something to that extent. To get in, it was seven lari for each of us. And we got an audio tour to be aware of everything that happened here. And that was 15 lari each. So two people, total of 44 lari as of October, 2020. So let's go explore. So this was sort of a dwelling for them and right next to it a few pits so they can make their offerings and rituals to the gods. Yeah, so we're standing right next to what might have been something of a main area here. And I just want to acknowledge quickly that Corona is an immense tragedy, of course. But in moments like this, it's quite gratifying to have a whole ancient rock town to yourself. It's just us two. And we saw two other tourists here and, oh, and there's that dog somewhere. <laughs> Down there is an ancient village also called Uplitsihe. It was actually destroyed in the Gori earthquake of 1920. And the villagers still lived there for a while, but after the river changed its bank, it pretty much dried out and they fled to another village nearby. And now this site is actually used for films, Georgian films mostly. I think I would have been spending a lot of time in this general area of the cave town back in the day. We're now in what seems to be one of the most uh, preserved areas here of Oplisihe. If you see the holes on the walls here, uh, those were actually ovens. And here they have a little fireplace complete with the chimney that goes all the way up. was used 
shoes for some ritual practices, so couldn't help but get the old Jewish ones. <laughs> okay, we have just finished exploring Uplissihe. We had a celebratory beer and some pretzels at their little cafe. And we asked the woman how to get back to Gori because we had no idea. Um, and she said, we actually have to walk down this deserted road, cross the bridge, and apparently we will find a bus or which will probably be a minivan. So that is our mission as of now. And when we get back to Gori, I'm gonna have to find um, a bit of a Stalin souvenir for my friend back home in Brazil. Shout out to Wira, Yai Wira. See you in Gori or whenever we find this marshrutka. We made our way back from Uplitsihe. Uh, we're already back here at our Airbnb. Just so you know, the Mashutka, the minivan from Gori to Uplitsihe is just one lorry and you just pay the driver directly. It's super cheap. So if you're ever in Gori, please do yourself a favor and go check it out. Yeah, we had dinner in town, got a wine on the way back home. Tomorrow we'll be headed back to TBDC in the morning. Back in August, I did a hop on hop off trip that took me all around the country of Georgia. If you want to check out what happened on day one of that trip, just click on the video that's on your screen and I'll see you over there. About three, two, one.